Greetings to everyone. Welcome to another episode of Board Game School. Today we're introducing a new game to the channel. And it's new to the channel because I began this channel to dive into Magic Realm uh, for the Board Game Geek Magic Realm community. And I'm expanding out to other games as I had originally intended. Uh, the first game that we're going to expand out into is a game called Arcade. And it's by a company called Nestor Games. And Nestor, the little short little blurb on Nestor is that he makes, he seems to be this guy that makes his own little manufactured games. Here's a picture of him. Nestor Romero Andres. And here he is playing a game of his design called Coffee. And let's see here, we have in his company section on Board Game Geek, there's a lot of images showing games that he has made. If we go up to his linked games, you'll see here there's about 14 pages of games that he has worked on here. And so he's created a lot of little, you know, small portable games that you can take with you. Uh, they're ab abstract games too. This is a unique category of abstract games that he seems to specialize in and they're really beautifully designed there's these great um, uh, the parts are I don't know they're like laser cut or acrylic or something and they're really beautiful anyway the game that we're doing today is arcade and let me show you here I purchased arcade in 2016 here's an image from May 2015 I discovered it I didn't find it on Board Game Geek, and this is part of the reason why I'm doing this video is because I found this, I found an image of Arcade on Pinterest, but it it didn't have the name Arcade with it, it didn't have uh, Nestor's name, it was just these images, images similar to this, where somebody had photographed an image just like this, where there were some tanks on a grid, and there was no description, and it was just in a search for Tron games or something, I don't know. And you can see here that this game is really visually appealing here. He has these really nicely cut acrylic, I think that's acrylic tanks, uh, with the little numbers on them, and they're these cool colors. And they come in these little sets uh, in this VHS box. And it's really themed like, uh, you know, from the 80s, like VHS box from the 80s. And it has a Tron theme, in it, but it's not, of course, labeled that probably because you know Disney would never license this out but here we are here's here's a set I have this set I have another set where they have the red and blue tanks and then the besides the tanks there's a couple of different units like the interceptors here which look like the recognizers and there's also here's all four of the sets here I have a set that's similar I have, I have enough to create this game I have the interceptors and the tanks this is almost all the pieces that I have uh, personally and then he also has other units which are these spider units called arachnids and I I have not seen I have played this game with my brother and I see that there's no mod for it on tabletop simulator and so one of the goals of my board game school channel that I had started was to uh, expand out it began with the want to do videos about Magic Realm because that we're a small community in the Magic Realm community and the I've got, I have these six videos which is a 5A and 5B here I've got six videos and they're they're modest views you know I'm not really doing this to aim for gigantic views I, I mean it'd be nice but it was more to just uh, address the needs of the Magic Realm community for people that were trying to get into Magic Realm that might do better with video uh, playthroughs instead of um, rule books and things, PDFs to start. So, and in my original about, I discuss here that I wanted to go through some other games here. There's more than I've listed, but you can see here I have Nestor Games Arcade, and so that's what we're going to do today. And so, in order to explore <laughs> Nestor's arcade game here in tabletop simulator I had to create it this this mod didn't exist and I just don't think this game is well known and I feel like Nestor did such a beautiful job with the game that I wanted to see if I could help create a little bit more awareness of it and just have fun 
uh, building a tabletop simulator mod. So I have here this little card here that says Nestor Games Arcade by Nestor uh, Romero Andres, and then I put my little Board Game School TTS mod by. Uh, so if we load up the mod, and hopefully by the time you get this video, uh, by, by the time this video is available on the channel, this mod will be uploaded to uh, the Steam Workshop, and I'll put a link to it in the YouTube clip. And the first one that we're going to do is I'm just going to do a tutorial on how to play. We're going to start with the tanks, how to play with the tanks with the basic rules, then we'll go into the advanced rules and uh, how those tanks play against each other in the advanced rules, and then we will cover the interceptors, which are like the uh, recognizers, and the arachnids, which are these big spider things that look really uh, pretty. And these units, uh, they don't, in this tabletop simulator, they don't have a really good transparent plastic or glass uh, material. I tried to find a way to build it in Unity and it wouldn't translate over. So I just stuck with this shiny uh, kind of plastic and it's, you know, it does the trick for uh, what, uh, what my needs are for getting the game into tabletop simulator. And so we'll start with that. So to get started, what we'll do is we will, uh, I'm going to just uh, cover some basic stuff here, which is that uh, there's this big board layout, this grid 15 by 15, and uh, there's a 16 by 16 grid available in this bag here. If we right click search, I have a 16 by 16 grid, and I also have a 10 by 5 grid. The 10 by 5 grids are what came with the VHS box set, and then he has these bigger sets that come in a roll mat that you can do. And I have this 15 by 15 laid out because of the nine units allows it to be uh, symmetrical on both sides because of the odd number of units. If you were to play with six, like you could pull out the 16 or you can build uh, multiple boards with the smaller pieces. Uh, I just laid out, I laid out some uh, walls here. These little white squares are walls. Like the little, if you float over them here, it tells you what each item is. I went through and painstakingly made sure everything was labeled so you could see what the names of the things were. So as I refer to things in the, as I refer to items in the uh, the instruction manuals, which are in here in this uh, VHS box, which is a, I tried to, I reproduced this 3D model here based on the, the, uh, the game box set that it came with when I ordered it. And I actually, this is a images from my box uh, that I built it from modeled it in 3D and um, as I cover the rules uh, over these units you know I'll be labeling I'll be you know naming items and the names are here on the each of the items there's like a name as you float over it so hopefully that'll help you um, keep everything clear as I make the references to it so in order to get going um, we have I have all the units out here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a moment here and I'm gonna move the units that we're not gonna use and I'm gonna put them over here I have this little unit bag that's everything's out on the table when you load the mod and maybe when I add the you know the sidecars and the uh, artillery units um, I'll put all of them here in this bag and maybe just have the tanks out for the initial game so I'm gonna take a moment and I'm gonna select the units we're not going to use for the first part and you can see it float this over this bag and they'll disappear into there if we if we're careful about our selection here so oops and i'll leave those tanks and we'll just take these okay we've got everything put away except for the tanks and now we'll begin to learn the game here this will be the tank versus tank basic battle and then we'll get into the advanced rules and so the arcade is basically a game of move and shoot and there is a unique uh, system for moving and shooting for each of the units I have these little unit reference cards here that show you you know quickly how they move in case you need a reminder but we'll get into that in a little bit because we're gonna just go over the rules here so if we look at my the VHS box here and we right click it and we do a search it's like its own little box here I have the uh, tube edition which is this is the rules for the tanks there's the reinforcements for the inceptor in there and there's also the arachnoid uh, these are all PDFs and you can pull them out and what you can do with these 
is they will, um, if you hit this little button here, it'll pop up to the screen, and then you can look at the PDF manual. And this is a good, you know, quick way to reference because you can see that you can see the board here, you know, and look around, and it's kind of over here, out of your way. Or if you want, if you don't want to put it up there, you can just set it down on the table somewhere out of the way and uh, click through it this way as if you're looking, you know, on a desk. And maybe use the M to magnify if you need to breed a little better. That's another thing. The M key lets you uh, magnify in Tabletop Simulator. Anyway, let's let's pop this up to the screen here and we'll look at these rules here. So, Tube Edition Arcade, it gives you this, you know, breakdown. Command your tank squadron to destroy the enemy. Navigate the labyrinth area and labyrinthine area and blast the hostile tanks while protecting your own. This is a tactical test of skill. Lose all three tanks and it's game over. But if you win, you might just see your initials in the high score list. Very thematic to the old arcade game rooms that we all used to frequent as kids in the 80s. Here it has the list of items that you'll need to play, and those are the ones that I've, you know, left out for this basic game here. We'll go to page two. And it tells you to set up, and they've set up on the the board that comes with it. The, each uh, VHS set comes with multiple of these. Actually, you get uh, two or three of these in a set. So you can set up a pretty big uh, board, or you can just use the basic layout here of a five by ten, or this is one too. Yeah, it's a five by ten uh, a board, which is, which is a pretty good size for a, a basic game. But I wanted to use a bigger board so I could show you uh, how the uh, targeting works as well. So, place each empty. Let's see. That arrange the tiles onto a desired, in any desired shape, so that they align with imaginary square get, grid. Place walls in some of the squares, which is what I've done here. And these are all locked down. If you want to move them around, you can hit L and un, you know unlock it, and you'll see here they'll like land in place. And then you can hit L and lock them down again. I've provided this uh, these bags here for the pieces that are you, you can get infinite amount. So there's some energy pools I've placed here. There's the floor craters we'll talk about later, web markers for the arachnids, and the stun marker, which is used uh, when you stun tanks or other units. If we... Um, because you can destroy walls in the advanced rules, that's why I've also made it so you can unlock these and move them off the board if you need to. And I'll leave them in this position for the initial game here. And let's see here. It has a setup example. It says you can also check out Nestor Game Site for suggested setup configurations. And he had he had photos of different layouts. Each player takes all the cards of her, his or her color, and the four black discs. I didn't use the black discs that came with it. the The physical game has black discs to record. I just thematically made a them orange so that we, you know, they look a little bit more matched to the theme of the color and then you place your cards in front of you in the numerical order and you place the disc on the number six which is what we've done and I you know here's tank one here's tank you know it says tank OR which is orange one damage card over here same thing we got this uh, tank one tank green you know tank green one tank green one damage card so you place your cards in front of you in numerical order and later as we add more pieces, you, you play from left to right, so if you say you had arachnids or the interceptors, you don't have to do three tanks, three arachnids and three interceptors, you could like place them in between and decide, you know, through planning the turn order of the units, which is, you know, strategically significant to the way this game plays, so that's something to keep in mind. You place the fourth disc, which is a fourth black disc, which I made a little bit a bigger one, this is a turn disc here. Directly below card number one, this is the activation disc and indicates which tank is active. So for the first turn, you know, this would be activating tank one. And I've set that up for the orange here too. So that would be the first turn. And so our game's ready to go. So let's go on the next page here. It says determine which player goes first by any peaceful means. I like this uh, sense of humor from uh, Nestor here. This player takes all ten dice. Uh, I've given each side uh, their own thematic colored dice so they don't have to share the dice. I have to drag them back and forth. Each player can roll their dice here in the TTS mod. Uh, let's see here. Core rules. You rarely play with the core rules alone, but the game is easier to learn if we introduce them first and then the rest. In the core rules, shots are considered to follow a parabolic path. 
this means the walls don't block the shots meaning that it, there's a there's a way to shoot the tank where you fire in a straight line but the basic rules has you firing in parabolic so the, the you know the shots are going to like launch above the you know the firing plane uh, above the like playing field and then land so it's firing at an arc <clears throat> players alternate turns during the game doing any of the following with their active tank all actions are optional so moving the active tank you can spend up to six movement points for your active tank on your turn tanks spend two points when moving to an orthogonally adjacent empty space and three points when moving to a diagonally adjacent empty space when moving diagonally the two spaces are orthogonally shared by the starting end when moving diagonally the two spaces orthogonally shared by the starting and ending spaces must also be empty so when you're doing this you can move and we'll make an example here like this would be moving one two that would be a one two move or like it says here three points in moving diagonally and you could go one two three now let's say you were starting here you could go one two three here but you can't go one two three here because you would bump basically into the wall I'm using the E and Q keys to rotate the tank here but yeah you couldn't make this move because that technically blocks it so you could make this move you could make this move but you can't make a move where you're getting you know if, if there's something impeding the two spaces around it which we'll see an example of here so you can leave points unused so you get six movement points I have that over here on the uh, reference card here tank six move points and so where this becomes significant is because you could imagine yourself going well if you went one two three four five and you had five you wouldn't have it you couldn't use the sixth because you used three points getting there you would say well what's that different than going one two three four five six right well that becomes significance because if you're in a space like this and you do two diagonal moves which is six you could go one two three four five six that is a better that that gets you to this square faster than if you tried to go one two three four five six one two three four five six you wouldn't arrive here so that diagonal move is significant uh, being that you use three and that you have six movement points because it gives you this ability to cross diagonally faster than one two three four five six you know like then just <clears throat> moving diagonal once and up so it gives you that it's a it's a it's a nice little play balance there for the movement planning to have that diagonal move be considered as part of your distance uh, in trying to navigate the map here okay so let's look into let's go to the next page here here he gives us examples here the orange tank moves one step forward which is two points and one step diagonal which is three points for a total of five points just like I explained here tank one upper left cannot move diagonally to the marked square because there is a wall adjacent to both the origin and destination so here blocks it just like I said okay so that's that's basically the movement which is one part of the phase and then you have your firing your cannon so firing the cannon of your active tank although the tank turrets can rotate they are merely direct decorative and I would say this that I did put um, I saved states here so if you're in state one that's the forward if you hit the two button it aims that turret that way if you hit the three button it aims the turret that way and if you hit the four button it's the destroyed tank I just put that in there for fun uh, future versions of the mod I might make more positions and destroyed versions of the other units I just put that together as a a little um, test for states of a, of a model here and so that's kind of fun if you want to aim you know just using that for fun <clears throat> pressing one through four to get the different states of the model okay you can only fire the cannon once per turn but it does not cost any of your movement points to fire to fire the cannon cannon to fire the cannon follow these steps so let's move to the next page here determine the target unit and so let's say we were trying to target one and we we're gonna to try to target over here we'll target tank three just you know we wouldn't when you know the rules here you know you probably can't shoot that far but we'll just go over this now so calculate the distance between your active tank and the target space or yeah target space so whether that's a space or a tank to do so count the number of spaces that separate both horizontally and vertically so it's showing here how to count them out then sum up the highest of the two plus 
half the lowest rounding down. If your tank is not moving this turn, subtract two points from the result. Your pilot is aiming carefully. So that's significant in that you can, if you're not going to move your tank, you can minus two from the distance, basically. If the number of dice goes below one, then you automatically hit, dealing six points of damage. So this is, this is a significant uh, strategic point here, being able to uh, fire and uh, not move and be below one when you do it on your adding because you're going to get an automatic hit. <clears throat> this becomes more significant when we add advanced rules when you get to uh, use other rules for firing against your last shot, which we'll get into later. So fire the cannon by rolling as many dice as the result of the calculation with a maximum of 10 dice. And so that this here is significant because it's determining that you have uh, you can max out the distance at 10. That, that's the range of the, of the parabolic you know, cannon that you fire is that you, you can fire at 10 spaces. You can see here you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And, but what does he got here? So we have the active tank is eight spaces away from the target horizontally. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And then four spaces, spaces vertically. And we always, he, like he said here, he, the, sum up the highest of the two plus half the lowest rounding down. So because this is four, he halved that rounding down and it becomes two. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and then eight, and that would become 12, but he, he halved the second, the lower number, and that becomes two. So this is a distance of 10. And what we're gonna do here is you roll as many dice. So here, this would be 10, and we have 10 dice. That's why it's got the maximum of 10 dice. So I put the 10 dice here. If at least one of the dice shows a one, then you've missed the target, so you can see with 10 dice and rolling them all for a big distance like that, there's a high probability you're going to get a one and then it becomes a miss. And so, the, of course, then in that situation, it's better to get closer and then be counting less. So let's say you're a one, two, one, two, three, four, five, that'd be seven, plus round down, so that's eight. You would only roll eight dice you want to get closer to your target so you're rolling less and less dice so you have less chance to roll a one and so let's see here if we make an example if our tank if this tank was here and we said one two three four five and then one two that would be seven plus the uh, rounding down on the second one so that's six because it'd be two and half be that so six so we'd roll six dice to see if we could hit this tank here parabolically. We hit the R key, and we see here, oh, and I didn't roll a one. Okay, so let's see here what it says. <clears throat> if at least one of the dice shows a one, then you miss the target. Otherwise, the target is hit for as many damage points as the lowest die value. And you can see here, because I rolled a lot of dice, my lowest value was two, and so I did hit it for two points of damage, and so this would be hit, and then I would move the three, the player would go from six down to four, and then that would be the damage caused. And if the damage disc goes below one, the unit is destroyed and removed from the game. Optionally, you can keep the unit in place so it acts as an obstacle. After taking your actions, move your activation disc to the next unit to activate it for the next turn. The tank order is one, two, three, one, two, three, here. If your active unit has been destroyed, simply move your activation disc to the next unit and pass the turn to your opponent. That is to say that destroyed units actually take a turn doing nothing. So you, when you lose a tank, if they have three tanks, uh, and let's say this one was destroyed, this tank was uh, done, moved out of the game here. If it was its turn, you're basically losing a turn. So uh, it becomes as, as you lose tanks, it becomes more advantageous for the your opponent to get the you know to get the drop on you, to have a better uh, probability of winning so because destroyed tanks or any destroyed unit becomes uh, something that takes up a turn so I'll put this guy back here and these are the basic rules let's see here if we go to the next page six 
Game end. If at the end of your turn all enemy units have been destroyed, then you've won the battle. You can also grant a different victory conditions before the game starts. And there's other victory conditions which we'll get into uh, further in this tutorial here. But what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the advanced rules because I like to use them uh, because they animate so many more pieces and things happen that change the dynamic of the game and we'll go into that now. Okay, so the first of the advanced rules here it says I recommend applying all these rules at once, but you can add them to game sequentially. Agree on which ones you will be using before the game starts. Okay, so this first one that we're getting into for the advanced rules is called collateral damage, and this is one of my favorite mechanics of this whole uh, design that the arcade has that uh, Nestor built into the rules here is that when you just fire these shots uh, parabolically, you can fire a salvo to fire at another tank here. If you miss, like we had a hit here on the orange tank because there were no ones, if we had fired it and there was a one, and I didn't get a one that time, that's another hit, and here's a one, and this is a miss, and anytime you get a miss, it, show, it says here, a miss doesn't just disappear into thin air. It can make a lucky ricochet or even strike something else nearby. During the setup phase, place the compass tile next to the zone. And I've created the compass here. And it's this little, you know, it's, I called it the miss compass. It's a die compass here. And I've set it up. It's locked in place. Uh, if you want to uh, unlock it and maybe, say, rotate the compass in another direction so you can play it a, a different way, that's up to you. Uh, sometimes this piece of wall will get destroyed so I'll move it to another wall or over to the side of the table but I've got it in the middle here because I, I use it a lot um, it, so during the setup phase place the compass tile next to the zone aligned with its sides it doesn't matter which in which of the four directions it is oriented but it must stay oriented the same way for the entire game each player takes all of the targeting tokens of her color and so that's these things that's these targeting tokens and these become used when you use the collateral damage rules okay so <clears throat> during the game each time a shot is missed at least one one is rolled follow this procedure to find out where the rocket strikes so let's say here we're gonna move this tank here and let's say he moved up here so he did one two three four five and move there and that this tank is here, although hypothetically it wouldn't be in that space at the beginning. Well, let's just keep them at the beginning here. I'll show you how this works here. So <clears throat> I want to fire. I'm going to take a shot because there's another reason. There's another rule that comes into play later that is also useful after you take your first shot. Um, I mean, let's say it's like calculating a trajectory here. So. I want to take a shot at this tank. We'll count the spaces out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can't get him in distance because that would be the that'd be as far as I could get here. Um, but maybe I could get to this wall and destroy the wall because there's also a rule that when you hit a wall with a missed shot or you hit it if you aim at it, that it destroys the wall and then it becomes a uh, that it removes the obstacle. So we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then over one for nine. So that would be nine dice. And I can't roll that other one down, so it stays nine. So we'll get six, seven, eight, and nine. And so what I've done here is I know I'm targeting this wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I put my little target there, like I'm shooting at that wall. And let's see, I've rolled the nine dice, and let's see if I can hit it by not rolling a one. And I rolled a one. And so I've missed here. And so here's what you do. <clears throat> During the game, each time a shot is missed, at, at least one one is rolled. Follow this procedure to find out where the rocket strikes. So we know we have two ones here, so we know we missed. Remove all the pairs of dice that add up to seven. So this is an interesting mechanic here. So we got to remove the ones and the sixes first. So we move these two out of the way, and we move these two out of the way. So we've got those separated from our group here. 
And then Nestor designed this really interesting mechanic. Remove all pairs of dice that add up to seven. This is four threes and five twos. So we, we have one set here. This is a five and a two that can be removed. So those are out of the way. And there's no more combinations. If there was a four here, that four and that three would be removed and there would only be two twos. But this is what we end up with. This is a cool mechanic here. Remove all pairs of dice set up to seven like we did. If there are no remaining dice, like you can end up with dice where you get rid of them all because there are pairs and this is what happens. Then the target is hit for one point of damage. Yes, your aim was off, but luckily the rocket scored a glancing blow after all. Collateral damage procedure ends. However, if there are dice remaining, so that's like you can get a glancing blow if you manage to eliminate all the dice after the initial misroll and pairing. If there are no remaining dice, then the tar- wait. Oh yeah, we did that, okay. However, if there- yeah, if there are no remaining dice, then the target is hit for one point of damage. Your aim is off, luckily the rocket scored a glancing block for all. The collateral damage procedure ends. But however, however, if there are dice remaining, the shot has missed the target altogether and will land elsewhere, which may be outside of the zone. In order to determine, outside of the zone meaning off the board, which wouldn't give you a place to place your marker here. In order to determine where it lands, start from the targeted space and then do the following for each die value remaining. Not for each die, for each value. You should have only one or two values left and they won't add up to seven. Otherwise you've done something wrong. To determine the offset. In the direction indicated on the compass. Okay, so we got I've worded this wrong here. You should have only, okay, wait, wait. Got a few commas here, let's see here. In order to determine where it lands, start from the targeted space, then do the following for each die value remaining to determine the offset. In the direction indicated on the compass tile for that value, count as many spaces away from the target as the number of dice with that value. After you have counted the offset in each direction, this offset location is where the rocket hits. This is a little complex way it's described, but basically what he's saying is there's three dice left. There's two twos and one three. And if you go to the compass here, you see here there's the two and there's the three. So for having two twos, it goes over from the target because I missed. So it's like it's I've aimed at this and I've missed. So it parabolically lands somewhere else. So we got two twos. So it would go one, two. And then like we saw here, I have one three. So it moves three. So this tells you which direction that goes. So it was two twos and one three. So that you can see here I aimed here, rolled the one to miss, removed the dies that added up to seven, and the sixes and the ones, and I had two twos and one three. So this is actually where the shot lands. Okay, and it shows you here, here's the diagram to show you like he rolled the dice to try to hit him. There was a one, so that's a miss. And so we gotta get rid of the ones and the six. So those are marked off first. Then we get rid of the combos that can equal seven so there's a five and a two and a three and a four and then he had two threes and then it shows right here he had two threes and one two kind of just like kind of close to what i did and you can see here that is <clears throat> he aimed for this tank fired at this tank and because there are two threes it goes one two because the die compass shows that and one two here, so you see it hits actually here. So that's the way this is set up, oriented to this board, or like mine is to this board. That's what happened. Dun, dun, dun. So it determines how you miss. This is a cool little mechanic for misses. And then what happens is, he describes here the orange active tank fires a rocket at the green tank. And this happened. And then we have the floor destruction, which is another rule. So if during play a rocket hits an empty space, then place a destroyed floor card on it. This space has been destroyed, and from now on acts as a gap. It can neither be occupied nor crossed by a ground unit. And so that's what I have these little markers over here for. So I fired at this wall, trying to destroy the wall, and the die rolls determined the compass put us right here. And so that's where this would land, and I would go here to the floor crater, and I could just grab this and pull out real quick. And there's our crater. And we just leave this here for now for the next round. So we've destroyed that floor. We've got that neat little graphic. This is something that comes with the uh, VHS game. They have little markers like that, and I put them in here. <clears throat> and they're really thin little markers like that in the real game, too. Pretty cute. And so that's what happened. I fired here, it missed, it landed here, and it destroys the floor, and that's the uh, floor destruction in play here.
if during play a rocket hits an empty space, then place a destroyed floor card on it. This space has been destroyed. I'd read that. Okay. Destroyed floor tile is placed where the rocket hits, just like it showed. Wall destruction. So if the rocket hits a wall, remove the wall. So I was trying to hit the wall. If I would have hit it, I would have destroyed it. But you can also say you're aiming for a tank, like here, and then it, it moved over one and over two here and hits this wall. Then we would you know, hit L and move this and move this off the table and that, that wall would be destroyed. It wouldn't destroy the floor, it would destroy the wall first and it would remove that obstacle. And um, you wonder, well, what kind of obstacles are these if these are firing over it? Is that really an obstacle because it's they're firing in distance? Well, it is an obstacle because in the advanced rules you also have the blast. So the blast is... Um, Oh, wait, 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 sorry. In the um, advanced rules, excuse me. In the advanced rules, um, when you talk about these obstacles here, they, uh, you think, well, the, the how is it an obstacle for firing over the top of them? I guess it's just an obstacle for movement. That's one thing it gets in your way. But it's also an, uh, kind of an obstacle for firing because in the advanced rules there's a second uh, way to fire. And I'm going to skip these two blast and stun first of all. And then there's this triangulation which we're going to get into. But there's an energy bolt here which is all units fire energy bolts instead of rockets. Energy bolts travel in a straight line so shots no longer avoid obstacles by following a parabolic curve over the arena. After calculating the landing space targeted space plus any offset for missing, you need to determine what the energy bolt strikes. In order to do this, use the following procedure. You can trace an imaginary straight line. So basically, if you have line of sight, you can just fire a laser versus a bolt versus like a cannon fire, you know, like firing a shell, a digital shell over to destroy the tank. You can fire a straight laser. Um, you trace an imaginary straight line from the center of the space where the firing unit is to the center of the shot's landing space. The first object in that line from your unit is what the energy bolt strikes. So this would hit the wall and it would destroy the wall. It receives one point of damage. Um, <clears throat> the thing with the parabolic shells is that they hit and depending on the lowest die roll, so you have the potential of you know rolling sixes and killing a tank with one hit if you can you know roll nothing but sixes or fives or four. You, the parabolic shot is definitely the more damaging shot because the direct shot is uh, only one, but uh, at least it's a guarantee shot because you could be firing and missing, but you know if you have line of sight, which this tank doesn't hear, uh, you can at least fire and hit for one point of damage, and so that's something to consider in your strategy here. And what you can do in Tabletop Simulator is you can... I'll close that off. You can use the tab to measure that. So let's say I was trying to see if that guy was there. I can get above the board and hold tab and you can see here that it you know it's trying to draw here and uh, show me if I have the line of sight and I don't you see I hit this I would hit this wall here uh, before I would hit the tank so that that wall would get destroyed at least so that's a way of say even if you were trying to target a wall if you don't want to spend a parabolic shot trying to shoot at the wall um, and then miss it and maybe hit the ground uh, you can just go, oh, I can see the wall and I can hit it with a laser, or I can see a tank and hit it with a laser. It's only one point of damage, but it's a guaranteed hit, so that's something to consider in the strategy. Let's put this back up here now. Now, let's see. If no object is hit before the shot reaches target, then the target is hit, receiving the corresponding damage. Notice that according to the collateral damage rules, the landing space can lie outside the board. The imaginary line is harder to trace in this case, but do your best and agree with your opponent. Okay, so that's just the straight shot versus the parabolic shot. Now we're going to go back here. We got wall destruction here and we'll cover the blast which is whenever a unit is hit with six point of damage or like if you do hit a unit four six points of damage all at once or a space or a wall is destroyed all the orthogonally or diagonally adjacent units receive one point of damage. So if he was here and here and this blew up or that wall blew up anything within a space like this guy got destroyed or this wall gets destroyed uh, it's one space away so this gets hit this pink tank could get hit this tank gets hit this tank could get hit that's a blast and um, that would receive basically one point of damage as if 
it's getting hit with shrapnel. So if this wall gets destroyed, all the pieces would fly out, you know, to this spaces here and cause one point of damage to tank two. If this tank got destroyed um, and it blew up, it would be able to hit, if, you know, the shrapnel would hit this tank for one point of damage. That's the blast rule. And then there is the stun rule, which is what I have this marker here for. Uh, this little guy here, the stunned marker is it says whenever a unit is hit with more than three points of damage or receives damage due to a, an adjacent blast, it is stunned. So even though you're only getting hit for one point of damage, because you get hit by it, you're getting stunned here. And what you would do is like say this one blew up and then the, the, you know, the blast hit this one, you would, it's tank three, you would take this unit and then uh, put that on the tank for stunned. And you can, if you need these, you can, another one, you can right click and clone it and then uh, have another one for use. Uh, you know, if you need multiples, you can clone them like that. And that's to, basically it's a lose a turn. So this tank gets stunned and then the next time it would have a turn, it wouldn't, it would just basically spend that turn becoming unstunned again. And that's how that stun rules works here. So it says to turn the card 90 degrees instead of taking a normal action, like you would take this and you know, in real life and spin it to say it's done, but I created these this marker so you don't have to turn it and move it around or anything like that because tabletop simulator is a little tricky uh, with lining things up, so. And so that's how the stun rule works. And then here's another thing that I really like that's significant to the strategy is the triangulation um, rule, which is uh, useful now that I've, I've fired this you know, I fired this shot here, I missed, and then the shot actually lands here. And this is significant because triangulation is experienced pilots use triangulation to shoot targets with greater accuracy. After each unit takes its first shot, place its targeting token on the space where the rocket hit, which is what we did here. We tried to hit this and we missed and it lands here. And on that unit's subsequent shots, instead of measuring the distance from the firing unit to the target, you can choose to measure from the targeting to token. This is really significant for strategy, you see. So it is advantageous to, even though you can't hit the tank in distance on your first shot because the, the board is too, you know, there's too much distance on the board, it's still good to try to hit a target because if you hit, you, you know, if you hit and it would destroy this wall, your target would be in then that space, or if it misses and it creates a destroyed, you know, floor crater, your piece is here, and now that's much closer to the tank, to the to your opponent, and so, um, on subsequent shots, you know, instead of measuring the distance from the firing unit to the target, you can choose to measure from the targeting token to the target. So now it's basically as if we're measuring from here to this tank, which is a lot less distance. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two. So that would be seven, rounding down to one, so it'd be six, so I'd roll six dice, which is a lot better than trying to hit it here. And so this triangulation rule is really important for the strategy, because you could imagine you fire the first shot as the tank pilot, and you go, oh, okay, that's about where I hit, so if I adjust my cannon a little bit more, um, I can, uh, you know, it's like he's he's got a sense after the first shot, like, oh, that's about the distance, so now he can adjust mentally based on that distance you know how to fire next it's like gives him the triangulation so um, that's a, a cool rule and it also makes you wary because if you're you know now the orange tanks and you see this target here you won't be moving over here because it puts you closer which allows less dice and like I said if he's able to get that under two or less uh, then that's really significant and if he doesn't move remember earlier here when we talked about firing um, if your tank is not moving this is on page five if your tank is not moving this turn subtract two points from the result and so if he's here and he's trying to go one two three four to hit me and he doesn't move that turn now he only needs to go one, two, three, four, you know, one, two, three, one, and that would be three dice, and then one, so that's four. And what would happen is, is that now he can minus two, so now that's only two dice to see if it hits. And let's see what that would be if I rolled this up here. 
And so yeah, I got hit for only two damage, but it's a, it's an easier to hit. It's a lot less possible to roll a one there. And so then he would hit, and then that would end up being there. And uh, you get the hit, and it's right on the space that the tank is. So this the guy would get hit for two points of damage. And then, well, guess what? If this tank doesn't move, uh, that's an automatic hit because he doesn't have to roll any dice because he's got the trajectory. And if he doesn't move, that's minus two. So this tank's going to want to get out of the way. So if he goes one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we still have a problem here because if he doesn't move, one, two, three. And then he minuses two. So he only has to roll one dice to hit. You know, so this is a very significant uh, set of strategies to, to consider when you use all these uh, advanced rules here. And so then it makes you pay attention to the targeting um, pieces because as you know, when you see your opponent's targeting pieces, you're like, oh, they can triangulate from there and I have to maneuver. I'm going to try to maneuver away from their triangulation because they're going to be able to hit me with less die rolls. And you know, if he's here or here, after firing that, you know, like that hit here, let's say that hit, there was a destroyed floor, and he goes one, two, three, four, you know, one, two, three, four, five. If he was foolish enough to make this move, well, if he doesn't move, that's one space, minus two for not moving, that's under one. And like it says here, if the number of dice goes below one, then you automatically hit, dealing six points of damage. So this is a guaranteed kill that you have to consider. If you fired that, and you've got yourself less than two, especially if he doesn't move his tank on the next turn, he gets that fire with the minus two, this would be an instant death for this tank to be that close to the targeting piece here. So you gotta consider where these targeting tokens are after they're shot into your, you have to consider that into your maneuver. And let's see, what other, what other rules here? We've about covered the, the basic, the most of the rules here. We got the energy bolt we covered. So that's our triangulation rule in the energy bolts. And we, you know, we did the, which is the straight thing. There's target anything. Your target does not have to be a unit. You can shoot an empty space or wall. So you can just aim. You don't have to aim at a tank. You can just aim and try to block, like you may hit a space here or destroy a wall or, you know, even if you hit, whether you hit or miss, you're basically destroying the floor. So it might cause the tanks to have to maneuver out of the way. It takes them longer to get to certain things. Okay, repair. This is another rule here. If you wish to use this rule, place some energy pool, pools, which are these blue tiles here, on the board during the setup phase. A unit can repair itself by drawing energy from the energy pool. It does so by staying on an orthogonally or diagonally adjacent space. So this would work because it's diagonal. This would work because it's diagonal. And um, <clears throat> let's see, it does so by staying on an orthogonally or diagonally adjacent space for its entire turn when it when it is the active unit and doing nothing else. So if it ends here, if it spends its next turn not doing anything, this repairs up to two points of damage. Multiple units can use the same energy pool in a single round. Energy pools cannot be destroyed. So uh, this is significant if you can get, you know, depending on how you do your board layout, these are, you know, you can move these. I have this little bag here for placing extra energy pools if you want to place more uh, on the board as uh, part of the dynamic for the way you play the game. And, um, you know, that report pairs too, so if he was hit, you know, tank two was hit, like say, say he was hit, and then for two points of damage like this tank was, he doesn't move that turn, when it becomes his turn he doesn't do anything, and then it switches back, and then he would get those two points back and repair himself here. So that's the repair with the energy pool, and then there's collision, which is tanks can ram other tanks. The ramming tank must expend enough movement to get into the occupied space, but stops moving one space short adjacent to the target. Both units receive one point of damage for every full two movement points the ramming tank spent to reach the target space. The target unit is not moved by the impact. So it would, I guess, if you were here and he has six points of movement, and we go one, two, and then this would be, you know, one, two, three to you know that would be five points well that one two three is at least two movement points so that would have been one hit of damage if he starts right next to him say he starts right next to him you go one two th three four five six that would be like 
three, if you're, you're ramming somebody point blank on a turn, you start your turn, um, you won't be able to move, but this basically here, this maneuver, if you were starting like this, um, you could ram it for six points of damage. Uh, and that would be significant too, like, uh, you think, well, if you, this is under six, you could just hit him for six points with your cannon, but maybe you want to shoot this one with your cannon, and then ram this one. You can ram this guy for six and then still fire your cannon at that. So this close combat stuff can be pretty uh, pretty advantageous if you plan it correctly. If you're not getting shot to pieces on the way in and you manage to uh, get close enough without a triangulation nearby, you can like ram and fire and get a couple of units out if that's an option that you can consider. And so those are the collision rules. And they show them here with this neat graphic. And then we have missions. This is the last page here for the basic rules here. You can agree on alternate victory conditions instead of the game of elimination, basically. Feel free to create your own, but here are some suggestions. Set up. Place energy pool in the center of the zone. Victory. You can win by having a single unit repair there three turns in a row. It's okay if no damage is being repaired. Victory. Reach the opposite end of the zone. So there's another one where it's just basically instead of trying to destroy the tanks, you're trying to get to the other end. And then there's a place a setup is place nine walls in the zone. I've got way more than nine here. Destroy five of them to win. I don't know if that's that's not really, you know, you, as you destroy them, I guess you keep the pieces. But that's more like almost like playing breakout or something like that. Didn't appeal to me. <clears throat> what I did do though is that um, I did make it so that uh, you you know you as you destroyed walls, you can make a pile of them, and then maybe you know if you played three games you know or, or four games and you could add up the walls that you destroyed as part of your point tally or something like that units destroyed and walls destroyed or something like that uh, there's other variations um, there are pieces in uh, one of the expansions that have little corner triangles there and it's as you move forward you move your little unit forward uh, with it and it determines you know like who has more space taken on the board kind of like a King of the Hill, but with uh, you know forward momentum or something like that, and we'll get we'll we'll cover that more. And this is the basic. So this is the basic game here that we've covered with the tanks, uh, with the advanced rules. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll do a playthrough uh, with somebody, and we'll play the tank game. And uh, that this will be the this is the first tutorial video for arcade. And then I'm going to do a playthrough with the green tanks versus the orange tanks, so we can you can see how the game goes in a playthrough, how how it plays. And then we will do a video on the arachnids and the interceptors, and then we'll do a playthrough with all the units together, um, and do a thing. So we'll have like four arcade videos. This is the first of four. This tutorial uh, that we're going to do for the arcade game here on Board Game School. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, see you shortly uh, when I release the uh, playthrough video as well. If you're interested in playing this tabletop simulator mod for Arcade by Nestor Games, you can find it in the Tabletop Simulator Workshop section. And it is under ID 246524. 4476 or you can search for arcade and um, you should be able to download subscribe to the mod here and you'll have it listed in your games list to load up and um, start playing uh, while watching this video or after watching the video however you want uh, but it is available here on the tabletop simulator workshop section so you go to the tabletop, tabletop simulator in steam and you can find it here in the workshop section under arcade by nestor games and i have my little logo here for the board game school but this is a game by nestor romoral and um i just want to give him credit for making the game uh and uh let you know i built the mod <laughs>